when it comes to a mandate from God, it has to be relational. Therefore, I would used to go and ask for a mandate. What's my mandate for today? And God weaned me off that, really, to the point where it was like, well, come and hang out with me heart to heart and you'll know what my heart is for today and you'll discover that that will inform and guide and direct you during the day or in a particular situation that you'll know what the father's heart is in that situation and we can't assume that it's the obvious because sometimes it isn't the obvious thing that we're uh have a part to play in it you know it's got to be the father's heart but when we do get the father's heart, then he gives us a lot of leeway into how we outwork the father's heart in that we can do it creatively through who we are um, in that way. But I would say from that I don't ask for mandates in that sense anymore. I just engage the father's heart and then go with the, the desires and intention that the father reveals in his heart. So always spend a lot of time with the father. Um, when it then becomes somebody else that you're looking to, well, what is the father's heart for this person? You cannot control or force somebody to do what you want them to do or what God wants them to do, because God doesn't do that. So what we're looking to do when we find God's heart for a person is to help create an environment where that person can discover what God's desire is for them. And that is not necessarily telling them what it is, but nurturing them, encouraging them to find their own identity and discover their own path in God um, by encouraging them in it. And therefore, love is the key to every relational thing. How do I show unconditional love to this person that reflects God's desire for them to know him? so that they then will find it easier to begin to come into that connection with God in that way. Yeah, so in that perspective, you know, I, I feel that whereas I would have been looking for, God, what's my mandate in this? Now I just say, what is your heart? Reveal your heart, that then your heart can then direct me and inform me and keep me on track and keep me operating in love because I can get a mandate from God for something and then not operating in love you know which which means I'm doing it in my own strength in my own understanding so you know a mandate really is the permission that God gives to outwork his heart you know really so I need to know his heart to outwork it so intimacy and relationship is the key and love is always going to be the hallmark of God's intentions is never not going to be operating in love towards somebody now love sometimes is quite direct and sometimes love is not wishy-washy and just an emotional thing sometimes the lo love is speaking the truth and that truth may be challenging to what someone already believes you know so it isn't always oh, like a passive love isn't passive love is a very active thing but it, it must be with the right intention and motive and god will give the wisdom of how that out works when it comes to a blueprint a blueprint is just a pattern of what to build you can have a blueprint for a car you could have a blueprint for a jumper you could have a blueprint for a house they're all blueprints which say this is what this looks like and sometimes you might get a blueprint which just gives you the general gist of something without the details to start with you know but sometimes a blueprint can be very de detailed but let's say you got a blueprint to build a car that will tell you what the car looks like and what its components are but it won't necessarily tell you what color it is you know and um, that is sometimes blueprints evolve so you start with a general intention that God has for what something is and then usually it begins to evolve as you begin to establish it 
you know so you could have a blueprint for a house which could be very different from another house they're both houses one's a bungalow one's a three-story mansion one's a tent if you like you know they're all different things of things to live in they're all places to live in maybe hopefully a tent would be a temporary place to live in and not a permanent place to live in but there still could be classed as a place to live in so the blueprint will determine that you're going to establish a place to live in let's say um where does the blueprint apply because there's generally jurisdiction to blueprint you can't just go and build a house on someone's land they own the land um and if you built the house on the, their land probably they would own the house you know so you've got to be careful where you do something as well as what it is you're going to do making sure you're in the right place and also the right time god could give you a blueprint and then give you permission to establish the blueprint five years down the line because it's going to take you five years to be ready for the building of that thing so god just because god shows you something doesn't always mean that now is the time to do it it's got to be time sensitive as well and realize generally if god is going to show you something we are going to have to change for that to be established you know it's usually a process which involves our change and transformation to equip and enable us to fulfill what that blueprint might be often in the future but you never you never um want to be too fast and you don't want to be too slow so you want to be sensitive to the steps that each thing takes and blueprints you know are god giving you a sense of his plan for something that he wants you to be involved in and sometimes it requires other people to be involved in things at different times which you have to find those people and relate to them and begin to engage with them because sometimes it, you can't do something on your own necessarily god may not want you to do it on your own therefore be open to um being able to be sensitive and making sure at the beginning that you've got a clarity because if you're half a degree off in the beginning you can be a long way off at the end and therefore don't rush anything you know because rushing often is what gets people into problems they try and do it now it's like a prophetic word is given well it must be now well that prophetic word might be 10 years down the line you know i remember bob jones's prophetic word about the joel's bartender was port was i think 1980s or something and it wasn't until 1994 that that started to manifest in toronto you know and it was like did he get it wrong back in 1980 no it, it was just god had a lot of preparation to do in people to get them to a point where that would take place in 1994 so don't rush um and take your time to talk to god establish things come to agreement and if there are other people involved absolutely make sure that everyone is exactly on the same page there is no expectations of others in something which is very different from yours i i once um engaged with a couple of groups of people that were meeting together and they were looking to do something together in the future and they felt that god wanted them to establish sort of an ecclesia um sort of um and it was like they wanted me to help them find out well what is the blueprint you know what's the what is it that god's calling them to do um and they had spent a number of time working together you know doing things together everything seemed to be okay but there were very different personality types of this two couples there was two couples and you know what is the heavenly vision what is the heavenly blueprint that that was what we sought god for and then when it came to we wrote it down and then i said look you need to make sure that everything is clear of what you think this means to you 
because the words are words. One person's interpretation of a word can be very different from another. So if we're talking about Ecclesia here, what does Ecclesia mean? Well, within about six weeks, you know, I had contact from these people to say, this isn't going to work. Because when they then began to talk about what their vision was for what they had heard God say, it was like poles apart. Absolutely poles apart. And there was no way that they were going to be able to outwork that. Because one couple had a very, they were very forceful in their opinions and how they wanted things done. And the other couple were very mild and gentle. But the other, the mild and gentle couple had much more of a clarity about what God was wanting to do than the other couple who had an agenda to do it in a particular way. And in the end, they had to part ways because there's no way they could have walked that out because their end goal was different. They might have used this, heard the same words from God, but their interpretation of what God said was so different that there was no way that they would have ever, ever think. So what happened? Well, those who I I felt had received the, the man, the blueprint, and really it was their blueprint. I just encouraged to go off and do what it is you feel the blueprint is. And the others who really wanted to control it wouldn't meet with me to discuss it because they wanted it to do it their own way. Now, I, it was not my business and it wasn't my responsibility, but I had helped them to hear what God was saying. And therefore, I, I was there to help if they wanted me to help. But one couple were very happy to... Um, clarify what what it meant the other couple didn't want to discuss it because they didn't want me to say you know i wouldn't have told them what to do because that's the, their responsibility but i would have clarified what i thought god was saying you know but ultimately they couldn't work together anymore sadly but you better know that before you get a long way down the line which is why if you're going to work with any other people within a blueprint You've got to establish clear, grand works. Got to lay the foundation deep so that you're building on the right foundation. And that is a relational foundation, but also in an in a understanding of what it is that we're doing here. You know, because um, you could say, let's say you have a blueprint for a car and one, one, one group basically feels we're going to do this on a production line and we're going to produce this with machinery producing and the other group is like we're going to build this by hand this is something that's going to be a labor of love we're going to do it by hand well you're going to fall out very quickly when it comes to starting because one group is going to say well we need the machinery to be able to build this and the others is we need the tools very different approach so it's, it's really important that you get the right approach that you're on the same page with others and that you're spending the time to really talk and establish relationship with one another. Because generally blueprints are going to involve more than one person, you know, if it's something that God does, because God really doesn't want us to do everything as an individual. There's quite a lot, you know, practical. So some of these things, the spiritual side of it can be quite straightforward. The practical side of it can be a minefield of complications when it comes to people being involved.